welcome to the lecture on types of continuous casting machine. So, uh, in the last lecture we had uh, the discussion about uh, the role of Tundis in continuous casting machine, uh, but uh, uh, coming forward from the uh, lecture 1 uh, where we had discussed about the uh, continuous casting uh, uh, machine or its introduction. So, in this lecture we are going to have some more discussions on the types of uh, you know continuous casting uh, machine types of uh, tundices which are used and also certain essential details. So, uh, coming to the uh, you know uh, content in this lecture uh, I must tell you that this is uh, we are going to discuss about the types of continuous casting machines. So, they are normally vertical type or vertical mold with uh, horizontal discharge and also curved type and then we have uh, we will talk about the essential details what uh, are those components which are there in the continuous casting setup and their roles and uh, uh, we will further discuss about the different types of uh, tundis. So, uh, you know uh, when we talk about the uh, continuous casting machine. So, as you know uh, we have already discussed that uh, in this case uh, the ladle will be uh, feeding the uh, liquid metal to the tundis and then turn from tundis it will come to the caster. Now, uh, you know when it passes through the mold. So, uh, in the mold which is made of copper and which is externally cooled with water. So, um, uh, they are basically uh, you are uh, uh, you will see uh, that the um, solidification starts. So, you have the skin freezing at that point and then further it uh, comes down uh, and then uh, you know as it will come down it is uh, further to be cooled from uh, the sides uh, with the help of water sprays. And uh, in that case uh, the, 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 the thickness of the solidified cell uh, will uh, go on increasing. So, basically uh, you know what happens that uh, you have uh, the this is your uh, tundis. So, you have tundis out, outlet and from there uh, you know with the help of uh, this is a CN, so it will go into the mold. Now, uh, after the mold, so it, it, it has to go further, you know, uh, down. So, uh, when we talk about the uh, vertical type, it means uh, uh, the mold is also vertical and the discharge also is vertical. So, uh, this uh, mold, which is, uh, you know, externally cooled with uh, water, and this is copper mold. So, the some certain amount of uh, thickness of the solid cell will be developed towards this end and then it has to go you know finally, uh, you know slowly it, it will go on increasing. Now, in, in initial days uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this was devised and at that time uh, it was a vertical machine itself. So, your mold is also completely vertical. And then further you are you know cooling, so you will be uh, you know uh, cooling through the uh, water sprays uh, as you uh, come downwards. So, it will go on increasing its uh, uh, you know uh, uh, sex, um, th thickness of this solidified cell, this is the solidified cell. So, and then uh, uh, once it is completely solidified then after that you are uh, you know cutting. So, cutting with the help of uh, uh, torch. So, uh, so this is uh, basically known as the vertical type of uh, uh, continuous casting machine because the mold is also completely vertical and the discharge also what we take is uh, in the vertical direction. Now, uh, what is important in this case is that uh, uh, you know you have any way to start this work at a height. So, and then uh, since the um, uh, you know uh, the product is coming um, in the um, vertical direction. So, actually you need a vertical space. So, basically the height will be uh, too high and uh, that is why you need to have a tall kind of machine 
and you need a tall shop or a large pit to accommodate the equipment. So, either you have the uh, tall shop, so you need to have the equipment so can, which can handle it, you need to have the tundis at a higher level, you need to have the uh, caster at the high mold at the higher level, then further it will come down and then you have to ensure that it is so solidified. So, it will have uh, the uh, you know uh, you will have the cutting facility. So, you can uh, cut it at uh, that particular uh, at a particular point. So, and then it has to be uh, taken out. So, basically uh, you need a, uh, a space where which is tall enough uh, so that the equipment can be uh, accommodated. Now, uh, this is uh, used for large and uh, medium sections and also for slabs where bending is avoided. Uh, we will see later on that uh, in many cases, uh, uh, you know, uh, when we go for the other design of the uh, caster. So, in that case there is bending or, or wherever bending is to be avoided, you go for the, these uh, things. Because uh, in this case, uh, it is coming vertically down. So, normally it is used for large and medium sections and why uh, we you, uh, it is suitable for large and medium sections because when there is bending involved, so that is very difficult for the large and uh, you know large sections especially or heavy sections. So, the large sections if you are casting uh, in those cases uh, you prefer to have uh, these uh, kind of equipments that is your vertical type of uh, equipment. So, you have the uh, roller arrangement. So, and in between the lots or once rollers in between once you uh, move uh, from uh, the mold uh, you know mold region downwards. So, you will have the rollers and in between you will have to accommodate uh, you know in such a manner the roller distances in between the rollers also the distance. Uh, and also you have to do cooling so that uh, you know uh, there is a sufficient amount of cooling optimum amount of cooling so that there is proper solidification goes on uh, and, and then ultimately after uh, you know once uh, you feel that it is completely solidified you can cut with the torch and you can remove it. So, you know that uh, the, that also is uh, one uh, very important point which needs to be uh, looked into. And then you have pinch rollers after that, and then further you uh, go and cut it. So uh, it is uh, good for slabs where bending is avoided. Easy to repair and restart the machine in the event of breakdown. So that is another advantage of uh, um, uh, this type of uh, machine uh, because here uh, you will have uh, the. Uh, Ease in repairing and as well as restarting because it is all vertical and you do not have the bending involved. So, it is simple kind of construction. So, uh, it is uh, relatively easier and uh, to start this uh, machine also when they, whenever there is a breakdown, whenever there is uh, you know interruption in the casting because of uh, any reasons. So, in that case, it is uh, relatively easier as compared to the uh, you know other types of machines which we will uh, talk about. So, in, in those cases, then uh, they are simple in uh, construct, this is uh, simple in construction uh, and also reliable to operate. So, they are normally because uh, you do not have uh, much of the design uh, component involved, what should be the bending or so. So, in those cases, you have uh, it is normally simple in construction and it is also reliable to uh, operate. Coming forward, uh, uh, you have another kind of um, uh, you know design of the uh, you know mold or, or the strand. So that is a vertical mold uh, and the horizontal discharge type. So what we do in these cases, we have uh, the vertical mold, but uh, discharge is taken uh, in the horizontal direction. So cutting will be taken. Uh, cutting will be done you know when the slab or the billet is moving in the horizontal direction. So, you are cutting it. Now, what we have seen in the earlier case when we have the vertical type of machine. 
So, you need the vertical space it has to come down then you have to cut it and further you have to go. So, you need a very large space and handling basically is certainly an issue. So, uh, whenever uh, we feel that uh, we should uh, think of uh, reducing the overall height or um, the height or handling is an issue. In those cases uh, we go for the uh, you know modification in the uh, vertical type of machine which we have discussed. So, uh, what we do is that uh, when the product will be emerging out of the pinch rolls then it is bent to have horizontal discharge uh, leading to saving of height. So, what is happening? So, this is your uh, uh, vertical type and uh, here what is happening you have uh, you know after this you have the uh, again pinch rollers are there. Now, uh, in that case in, in, uh, in, in the case of uh, these uh, type of uh, uh, you know uh, vertical type. So, it is all completely vertical whereas, what we do in the case of uh, you know uh, the uh, vertical type mold, but then discharge is horizontal. So, mold will be uh, you know it will be uh, mold will be uh, vertical and then you will have rollers. So, um, you know and then uh, after that you will have uh, in the end you have the uh, you know pinch roller here and then you, you know once it will come out of that then you are giving a bend. So, you will have the support also on the side. So, you are giving a bend and then after bend it will come in, in the horizontal fashion and uh, by the time it gets solidified and then you are uh, cutting it. So, basically you have the vertical mold only, but then after the pinch rollers you are uh, you giving a bend. So, that uh, from vertical uh, movement slowly it will have uh, a movement in the horizontal direction and then after that uh, at one point of time you are cutting it. So, and then you are taking it uh, from the soft floor. So, it is basically relatively easier to handle when you have a uh, horizontal movement or horizontal discharge. So, you can take use the crane and further you can load it or you can send it to other sections or so. So, you can uh, uh, you know on a horizontal platform you can directly you know uh, load it. So, uh, so these are the you know horizontal type of um, uh, mold with vertical discharge type. So, after the pinch rolls it will be bent uh, more requirement of floor space. Now, in the in the earlier case you need the more kind of uh, vertical space um, because the um, you know uh, product is coming in the vertically downward direction, but in this case uh, the product uh, will be bent and then after that it becomes horizontal. So, uh, you will have uh, to have the horizontal space uh, requirement uh, you know larger. Uh, you now, in this case a heavy section uh, cannot be cast. Now, the problem with the heavy section is that uh, the bending is a problem in those cases there may be uh, you know uh, defects uh, or in fact bending requires uh, you know larger forces and in that process it may there may be a lot of errors. So, whenever you have heavy section which is difficult to be bent now they are advised not to be cast using this uh, you know uh, process um, because uh, the bending is uh, a challenge in those cases. And uh, this kind of uh, you know machine is uh, more suitable for uh, the small and medium size uh, uh, cross section elements. So, normally whenever we have to uh, you know uh, cast the small and medium size uh, cross section elements uh, like billets or so. In those cases we go for and the vertical mold and horizontal discharge type uh, continuous casting machines. It is uh, difficult to repair and uh, also restart the machine in the event of uh, breakdown. So, uh, in this case as we know that uh, you know after the uh, uh, you know vertically downed portion uh, in the mold and up to the pinch rollers uh, you have a bend and then further it will be uh, going further. So, straightening and then you have to 
uh, cut it. So, because of that it becomes a complex geometry and uh, whenever if there will be repair requirement or if there is a breakdown and you have to further start in that case uh, it, it is uh, somewhat uh, difficult because uh, uh, you know you need to have all those design aspects in mind uh, you know because it is uh, uh, getting bent at certain angle. So, uh, so any kind of uh, uh, you know defect uh, what we feel that it may be likely to come uh, that should be uh, avoided. So, you have to have the extra care for uh, that uh, purpose. Next is the uh, latest uh, you know uh, trend of the uh, mold type which is uh, used in the case of uh, uh, continuous casting. So, that is your curved mold type. So, um, what you see that uh, in this case so now uh, the there will be uh, uh, curved uh, mold rather than the straight one. So, in the last two cases you have seen that uh, uh, you will have the uh, straight mold and then after a certain point uh, you need to uh, have the bending. Now, uh, in the case of this uh, curved mold type which is the uh, advancement in this uh, uh, you know design of the um, continuous uh, casting unit uh, the uh, mold itself is curved. So, when you go for the uh, equipment. So, you will have uh, this is your uh, you know submarine entry nozzle and then after that the uh, you know from here the mold itself so there will be some kind of uh, you know uh, uh, bend will be there. So, some curvature will be given here itself and then finally, you are uh, coming and then uh, it becomes horizontal and then you are uh, cutting it. So, uh, from there itself you are uh, giving giving certain kind of uh, uh, curvature and that is known as the curved mold. Uh, so, strand uh, come out of curved mold in a curvilinear fashion with a fixed radius. So, you have a particular radius. So, what we do is uh, you know in these cases the radius which is defined. So, you will have certain uh, you know radius from here or, or so. So, we many a times it is a variable also. So, you will have the radius and based on that radius uh, basically you design that uh, curvilinear portion. Uh, so, that uh, you have uh, the uh, proper uh, you know uh, flow and, and heat transfer taking place uh, and uh, you have ultimately to see that uh, the uh, solidification is complete up to certain point and then you are. Uh, cutting it at uh, this region because it will get further straightened. So, you will have the uh, rolls whose uh, job will be to further straighten is because it is all curved. So, you are uh, straightening it and then you are uh, uh, cutting at that particular portion. So, this is uh, the uh, you know uh, schematic of the curved mold or as type of mold many a times we call it as. So, bent before the entire section is solidified and curved strand is straight and after it is fully solidified and cooled to the desired extent. So, what we do as we see in these cases that you have the curved strand which is because of the curvilinear you know profile. So, they need to be straightened so with the help of pressure. So, because Mm, when you are cutting, the cutting has to be uh, at, at that particular point when the uh, you know product is moving in the horizontal direction. So, uh, so it is uh, ensured that it is fully solidified and also cooled to the uh, desired extent. So, those uh, are the situations where uh, uh, you know. So, all these uh, parameters of design and all these are. So, what should be the radius? how much should be obtained the, uh, the radius in the optimum manner all these things are to be looked into in uh, such cases. And uh, you know this has uh, the this is the latest uh, design which is normally opted uh, in most of the uh, industries which uses the continuous casting process as a uh, popular one. 
So, these are the different types of uh, you know uh, uh, continuous casting uh, machine. Now, if you talk about the essential details of the continuous casting machine. So, here uh, what you see is uh, you have the uh, hot metal handling system uh, as a source of uh, molten finished steel. So, one is that that system which is uh, handling this uh, hot metal. So, you will have the uh, ladle which will be bringing that uh, um, uh, you know uh, liquid metal from the furnace or from that uh, you know steel melting uh, place. The now then uh, you have a tundis that is as we have already discussed that tundis that is the uh, actual uh, reservoir which is uh, there uh, as an intermediate reservoir uh, which will be feeding the liquid uh, uh, steel to the um, you know mold. Then uh, you will have mold to freeze the skin of the casting. So, uh, you have uh, so liquid metal will be coming to the mold and as we know that this mold is normally made of copper and then it is externally cooled with uh, uh, the water. So, you will have the uh, freezing process initiated and then you will have the uh, freezing skin of formation. Then uh, after that uh, once we move down, so you will have uh, the uh, water sprays. Uh, which will be uh, ensured to complete the uh, solidification and also the uh, required cooling. Uh, so, uh, for that you have uh, the you have to adjust the you know uh, what way you are uh, you know uh, spraying and what should be uh, how much you should uh, uh, you know uh, do the cooling uh, you know so that uh, there is proper solidification, complete solidification and proper cooling taking place. Then you have the drive uh, system to withdraw the uh, strand. So, that is uh, another part and then uh, uh, so you will have the rollers uh, and then the rollers will be rotating and on that it will be uh, moving uh, towards the uh, final zone where it has to be cut. So, you will have to cut off uh, you know so you, you will do the cutting process with the help of a machine and, uh, and the you, when you cut it, it will be a uh, completely you know solidified piece uh, which will be uh, coming out. So, uh, this these are the details and every uh, you know component has uh, its essential uh, characteristics. So, you will have to have proper balance, proper you know monitoring of these all these uh, issues to have a defect free uh, you know uh, uh, product in the case of uh, continuous casting right from the liquid metal uh, going into the mold and then uh, taking the metal passing through that having the oscillation in the mold then further stripping of uh, putting the negative strip then it the uh, the skin will be leaving that mold and then they coming out when they are coming out you know only a small thickness of the solidified of uh, the cell is solidified of the whole cross section and then further that is increasing as it moves through the secondary cooling zones. So, all these things uh, you know these are the essential details of the uh, machine. Coming to the uh, different types of tundis, so um, as we, um, we know that uh, you have the tundis which is the intermediate reservoir. So, depending upon uh, you know uh, the uh, requirement of the product which you are making type of product or the shape of the product, uh, you know we can have the different uh, tundis design. So, one is that you will have a single uh, tundis. Uh, single strand uh, tundis and this is your multiple strand tundis. So, we can call it as a uh, tundis with one outlet. So, that is your single strand tundis and if this is uh, if there are many outlets then uh, you call it as the multiple strand. So, this is uh, four strand uh, tundis, this is uh, single strand tundis. So, this you will have inflow of the liquid metal, you will have the tundis, this is a liquid metal into will go. Now, uh, what happens that many a times when you are uh, you can uh, certainly work with only one caster uh, only one strand, but then uh, that certainly will not lead to very high productive system because uh, 
uh, you are getting only one uh, you know billet or slab or so, but you can have a uh, you know mold, uh, you can have a tundis where there are different outlets. So, these are used when you need to have, so here you will be 4 molds and 4 uh, products will be coming out at one point of time. So, basically you are economizing the process, you are having, you are getting this process, uh, I mean in lesser time you are getting more number of parts. So, the time in which it you will get uh, one part you will get here the uh, you know 4 parts. Another uh, aspects are the cost because uh, you know with uh, one uh, uh, tundis itself because any anyway lining you have to do after some time. So, this becomes uh, more and more uh, you know uh, beneficial when you go for this multi strand type of tundis. Coming to the different tundis types, so the, the earlier tundis type this is the, this tundis is the very simple in shape and they are known as the boat shape tundis. So, in that case uh, what you see is that you may have some uh, design changes like you may have the you know, walls which may not be inclined that may be straight and uh, the inflow may be uh, at, at this place or it may be towards the middle. So, uh, so accordingly you may have the changes in that uh, I am you know uh, the parameters of the uh, Tundis design. Now, if you come to uh, the requirement uh, point of view, so uh, you need to have the multi strand, so you are going for this. Now, now, what we mean to say is that in this case, many a times when the metal will go, in normal simple boat shape tundis, the metal which will go towards this these regions, they will be try to uh, they will uh, be likely to be getting uh, trapped. So, there are certain zones which are basically not the active zones and that is why we call it as a dead zone. So, dead zone formation is there. So, many a times we have the use of flow modifiers, but uh, dead zones in certain uh, tundices uh, you know certain shapes of tundices are there uh, you know normal traits or characteristics that uh, we have to understand. Now, uh, dip, uh, for the requirement of uh, the um, uh, quantity also that uh, you should get larger you know number of strands and more uh, uh, amount of metal should be teeming out. Uh, so, uh, for that also and, and from other uh, uh, point of view like uh, to increase the uh, you know to ensure the increase in the quality, we go for different designs of the tundis. Now, uh, this is another uh, you know tundis design which is uh, this is known as the T shape tundis. So, this shape which is uh, in the T shape this is known as the T shape tundis. Now, these tundises uh, they can be studied and what you see this is uh, shown by. So, the, the metal which will come this is a plan view. So, metal will come and uh, then it has to uh, uh, you know move in this fashion. So, you will have outlets here and it should be uh, passing through these outlets that is what normally happens in the case of uh, uh, the T shape tundis. Now, in this case uh, the uh, one of the challenge which is there because what you see is these zones which is shown they are DZ, DZ means the dead zones. Now, in any tundis uh, when we talk about the volume of the um, uh, tundis, so you have uh, we will uh, talk later that you have uh, the plug zone or mixed zone or dead zone. So, now we should confine only to dead zone and dead zone are those regions where basically it does not uh, remain so active and the metal which is there in that part that becomes stagnant. So, uh, you know uh, for that uh, matter it is not advantageous. So, what you see that in these type of uh, tundices there are likely it is likely that there will be dead zones are formed in certain these regions. You just look at uh, the T shape tundis, so it will uh, it will be moving at, at this place and then it is moving to outlet. So, what you see this portion is not in the loop. Metal also does not go towards that region because it, and, and the metal velocity becomes too uh, small also in those uh, cases. So, basically these uh, formation of dead zones may be there. But there has been uh, studies on the tundis and certainly these designs which we are seeing uh, they are uh, uh, you know accepted many of the uh, companies use it. Now, if you uh, look at uh, the another design which is uh, normally used by many steel makers 
is the delta shift on this. So, in that case what we see is you will have uh, such kind of uh, the structure. So, you will have uh, the inlet here and then it will move to the outlet. So, you will have the likelihood of certain uh, dead zones, but then these dead zones are not in those regions. So, as you see that in this zone because of the you know inertia of the fluid it will move like this towards the outlet. Now, in this case it, it is it is going. So, because streamlining effects. So, it will go and directly go into the outlets. So, jet zones which were likely to be formed in this here in these zones here it is not. So, in the case of delta shaped tundes these uh, uh, dead zones are avoided uh, in these regions. However, there is a likelihood of formation of these dead zones. Now, on, on, on these tundices you can certainly use the tundis signatures or the flow modifiers. Uh, to have the effect on the formation of these dead zones, the dead zones can be reduced. So, for that we use the different kinds of uh, flow modifiers like uh, dams or weirs or baffles or so. So, they are the different studies which are being carried on on these uh, you know uh, tundices. Now, uh, another design which is uh, also popular in the case of uh, tundis is the V shaped tundis. So, you have a tundis which is of V shape. So, it will come and then you have an angle. So, this angle on this angle this shape is there. So, um, uh, liquid metal will come and then it will uh, move through. What we have seen uh, may be it may be an extension to these two designs where you are getting the dead zones in this uh, opposite side. So, maybe uh, you know Rallender has uh, again given this uh, design apart from the T shape also. So, you have seen that it is uh, made here narrow. So, it will uh, the move in, in that fashion and uh, accordingly you can also place uh, you know these uh, so uh, these uh, flow modifiers in, in, in these cases. So, they will be uh, you know used and uh, um, uh, you know for the altering the uh, uh, flow uh, in, into uh, the standards. So, this is this design is uh, pro provided by the uh, Raylander uh, who is uh, who has worked on it and who has uh, devised these uh, tundis uh, different uh, uh, designs on this uh, uh, ten, uh, tundis. So, so, the T shape as well as V shape. So, it has been uh, by the uh, one of the researchers. So, that is uh, by the Raylander. Uh, so, these are the different uh, you know types of tundices which are normally uh, used uh, in the case of uh, uh, you know continuous casting units and uh, so you have boat shape, T shape, uh, delta shape and the uh, V shape. Many a times we have uh, also you, you can uh, you can come across the tundices which uh, come and then you have also certain kind of uh, this kind of a structure also you see that you have uh, you know uh, the bottom is not at all uh, at, at the same level. So, the, we have different designs depending upon the requirement you can have the different designs of the uh, tundis which serve to uh, uh, function as uh, the buffer vessel uh, and uh, which will uh, be supplying the liquid metal uh, to these uh, strands uh, when wherever especially when there is a uh, you know discontinuity in terms of the ladle change over or so. So, uh, so we should uh, uh, so we will uh, talk more about uh, you know other aspects in our next lecture. Thank you very much.